Hi, I'm Paris, and a few months back when Fitbit released their new Sense smartwatch, I had to get one right away. I was upgrading from the original Fitbit Versa, but I saw all the new features and sensors that were included on this, so I needed to try one out. But now that I've had it a few months, I've learned how many of those sensors and features I actually use. And the reason you might want to consider which of the features you will actually use is that there's an updated version of the Versa called the Versa 3, which has most of the improvements they've put into the Sense. And you can save money going with the Versa 3 rather than their top of the line Sense smartwatch. Find out more about the new Sense and the latest Versa 3 smartwatches at the links down below this video. Let me show you now what the new Sense can do and what I actually use it for. Now the electrocardiogram feature is a big seller on the new Fitbit Sense. Let me slide over and get to the app. There we go. I'm doing this upside down here so you can see it. Now you should be doing this sitting down when you can stay still. If you're moving around it, it messes it up. I'll try to stay as still as I can. 30 seconds here. Okay. You can actually see the, uh, the lines of the recording going on behind. See, because I started talking, it said, well, that isn't gonna work. So I will finish one up sitting down being still, and you can save it as, you get your instant analysis, but you can also save it as a PDF file, which you can then look at with a little more detail of the graph, I'll show you that. And after just a couple seconds of analysis, you'll get, hopefully, this message, normal sinus rhythm, and then at the bottom it explains how to get a PDF of your actual echocardiogram. And here's mine. As you can see, I wasn't completely still during it, but it got enough information to be able to make the assessment that I was in normal sinus rhythm. Now, the reason I was particularly interested in this is I have some history of heart issues, which fortunately have greatly improved now that I've lost weight and have improved my diet and lifestyle. And so it's nice to have something handy that you can record what your heart is doing right at the moment. It feels like it's doing something weird if you have any history of those kinds of issues. Even if you still have to go to the emergency room, in my experience, sometimes by the time I get there when my heart was doing stuff, everything looked fine when they hooked up the fancy 11 lead electrocardiogram machine. I said, everything looks fine. That'll be $3,000. So it's nice to be able to record it right now, print it out on a piece of paper and bring it with you to the doctor and say, here, this is what my heart was doing. So that was probably the number one feature that made me choose the Fitbit Sense over the Versa 3. It was worth it to have the extra money to have that sensor on me all the time. So should I ever need it, which fortunately it's very rare now, I can just scroll over, put my fingers on the side of it, and 30 seconds later, I'll have that printout to bring to the doctor with me. If, however, you do not have those concerns, and maybe you're younger and not particularly worried that you have AFib, then it may not be a reason to spend the extra money to get the Sense. Now for the new features in the Fitbit Sense that I thought I would use, but I ended up not really using. Skin temperature, which is not core temperature, so you can't really use it to figure out if you're getting a fever, and it's not an automatic tell me what my temperature right now is kind of thing. Instead, at night, it follows your temperature as you sleep, and it kind of looks for patterns, but it tells you if there's variation above or below, that can be perfectly normal. So what does it all mean? Never tells you that. And the stress sensor, which is pretty cool built into the crown of this is sort of like a lie detector machine, at least the part that measures changes to the conductivity of your skin. So you go into that mode and you put your hand over the top of the watch and you wait for two minutes and at the end of that it will give you a score. What does that score mean though? Well, you're supposed to assign a feeling with that score. Were you happy? Were you calm? Were you stressed? And you can sort of see a pattern. It pulls in your sleep numbers and some other factors. Anyway, it's, it's all rather convoluted and it doesn't really tell you much of what you can do. One nice thing though, there is a guided breathing feature you can use with that. So you put your hand over it, it's measuring your stress level and through tones that it produces, you breathe in and breathe out and it takes you through a way to reduce your stress. I did it once and it was nice, but I haven't done it again since, but that might be something you'd be interested in. And they've included in the new Fitbit Sense, GPS, so it has it on its own. It doesn't have to rely on your phone. When you go out for a walk, you go into telling it you're doing an exercise, which kind of exercise, starting now, and then it will give you a pretty good listing later of exactly where you went, how fast you went, your split times, your heart rates here and there. That one I do like, 
but I always bring my phone with me when I walk anyway, so it's not really necessary. What do I use every day and really like on my Fitbit Sense? Well, I like all the sleep tracking features because I'm not awake to know how well I'm sleeping. I do find it tends to often lose the first hour or two of my sleep, especially when I'm asleep before midnight. And then the estimated oxygen variation. This uses the SpO2 sensor, so it's measuring your blood oxygen level. If you see those uh, yellow peaks, especially if you see them often and a lot of them, you might want to pursue with your doctor investigating if you have sleep apnea. Now, if you're using the right watch face, then actually after you've woken up for the morning, you can go and see what your average blood oxygen level was for the night. Also the health metrics, which tie in a lot to what it measures while you're sleeping, your breathing rate during the night, heart variability rate. That's a indicator of your physiological and psychological stress levels. And I can tell you from stressful experiences and what this shows, boy, does it correlate. And resting heart rate. Now, this really does tie in with what's happening to you physically, I can tell you, because right now I'm going through chemo. I started back the end of October and my resting heart rate has been a, in the low 50s. I'm not especially athletic, but that's just the numbers. It tells me I'm so fit because my resting heart rate's in the 50s. But that has followed a pattern after each chemo infusion, which I showed to my doctor and said, does this mean anything? And they said, well, it could be this or that. But sometimes it's nice to have something you can actually show and say, look, this is what my body was doing rather than just say, well, I've been feeling this way. I think they tend to discount that more. Whereas if you can show them some an actual graph of something that was being measured, that they do have to take seriously. I try and get out and walk every day. So just about every day, I put the track your exercise feature to use. As I mentioned earlier, it's so nice because it breaks down all the data for you about your exercise and I'm not running or doing anything fancy, but even walking, it's nice to know what did my heart rate get to when I was coming up the steep part of the trail on my way back home. And there's one feature that's so annoying, but I do like it. It's the nag that tells you to move every hour. And you get that, I think, with just about any Fitbit. It does a little zzz, zzz. 10 minutes before the end of the hour if you haven't gotten in 250 steps and it tells you how many more steps, which I found is kind, kind of motivational because it's not a whole lot of steps you still have to do, but you get a little award symbol on the screen when you meet your goal. So I'm pleased with my upgrade to the Fitbit Sense from my old original Fitbit Versa. Expensive, but it was worthwhile for me for that one feature, especially the EKG, that since it's something I'm concerned about and having this with me all the time means I can quickly do an EKG that I could show to my doctor anywhere that I am 24 hours a day. But if that's not something you're really concerned about, you're not concerned you might have AFib, which is actually what the sensor is designed to detect, then you can save money sticking with the VersaLine, going from an earlier version of Versa or an even earlier Fitbit up to the new Versa 3. You get most of the features of the Fitbit Sense, certainly most of the improvements, without having to spend as much money. You can find out about the new Sense and this is the old Versa, the Versa 3. I'll link to both of them down below this video. And either would make a great gift for someone or for your own body. I found it's nice to, you may think, well, it's too many numbers about what's going on with me. But for me, if you feel a particular way one day and you don't know why, or other people say, well, you look fine to me, it can be nice to have it quantified exactly what's been going on with your body. So you can say, well, hey, look here, my heart rate variability was terrible last night. No wonder I'm feeling so out of it today. And my heart rate variability was pretty low last night, and I am feeling a little bit out of it today, so I'm gonna go rest up, but I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for, we give honest reviews. Paris DX.